Syria has accused Israel of carrying out what it called a flagrant rocket attack on a major military base outside Damascus. These pictures were published on social media while explosions were heard and smoke was seen rising from the area. The airbase at Metsa is used by President Assad's elite Republican guards. Israel has in the past targeted positions of Lebanon's Hezbollah group inside Syria. You have to remember that Israel and uh, Syria are technically uh, still at war. Since uh, 1973, the Arab-Israeli War of 1973, Israel occupies the Golan Heights uh, from Syria. They took that in 1967. Um, but it's believed that the, the, well, Israel's involvement in Syria is not so much about the Syrian regime, but more about Hezbollah, the Lebanese Shia militia that's one of the uh, Syrian regime's main allies in the conflict uh, uh, in Syria. Now, uh, Israel, Israel has not come down on any particular side in the conflict in Syria, but it has been focusing and keeping an eye on Hezbollah. It believes that Hezbollah has been strengthening during this conflict. It's believed that, uh, it believes that Hezbollah has been using the conflict to amass more and more weapons. Uh, and so the focus uh, of the report and the suspected Israeli strike uh, appears to be this supply route or Hezbollah's main supply route between Damascus uh, and the Lebanese border and so many of those uh, suspected airstrikes have been targeted, uh, targeting uh, some of those supply routes but also uh, the military bases that it's believed that Hezbollah is gathering some of those weapons and so there's been uh, numerous suspected attacks December 2013 there was an attack on Damascus airport there were a number of attacks in 2015 as well uh, as well as uh, the assassination of uh, a leading Hezbollah uh, military leader Samir Qantar uh, which uh, Israel was also believed to have been behind. But China and Russia have pledged additional responsive measures regarding South Korea's decision to deploy the THAAD missile defense system, a move which they believe poses a serious threat to peace in Northeast Asia. China's state-run Xinhua News Agency reports that top officials from the two nations met in Moscow on Thursday at the sixth round of the China-Russia consultation on the security situation in Northeast Asia. In a statement following the meeting, China and Russia said they agree the current situation on the Korean Peninsula is complicated and sensitive. They added that they uh, will take further unspecified countermeasures in response to the THAAD deployment to safeguard their own national interests. The U.S. relationship with Russia is in many ways defined by their policies on nuclear weapons. The outgoing administration has tried to reduce the numbers and the risk. Here's what Vice President Joe Biden said yesterday about why the, the Obama administration continues to push the U.S. nuclear arsenal downward. It's not about trust or goodwill. It's about strategic stability and greater transparency between the world's two great nuclear powers. The fact that it has become more critical as our relationship with Russia has grown increasingly more strained than the last summer. On Thursday, a representative for the Kremlin voiced the government's concern on the present U.S. military buildup that is going on in Poland. Dmitry Peskov, the Moscow representative, said that the advancement is being seen as a threat to the country's security. During a phone conference, Peskov said that Russia is seeing that deployment as a hostile step towards the country's borders. Peskov said, we perceive it as a threat. These actions threaten our interests, our security, especially as it concerns a third party building up its military presence near our borders. He continued to say it's the United States, not even a European state. Russia was at the center of Rex Tillerson's confirmation hearings in Washington. Tillerson is up for Secretary of State. Rex Tillerson, President-elect Trump's nominee to be the next Secretary of State, was on the Senate hot seat Wednesday. His grilling came not from Democrats, but Republicans, like Marco Rubio. Is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? I would not use that term. Mr. Tillerson, do you believe uh, that Vladimir Putin and his cronies are responsible for ordering the murder of countless dissidents, journalists, and political opponents. I do not have sufficient information to make that claim. On the annexation of Crimea, Tillerson said Russia's action was illegal. They took territory that was not theirs. 
He said Russia should have been challenged at the border with Ukrainian troops supplied with U.S. defensive weapons. His concern for the future? Russia today poses a danger. Our NATO allies are right to be alarmed at a resurgent Russia. Tillerson said the U.S. and Russia won't likely be friends, but America needs to move Russia from being an adversary to a partner at times. At his confirmation hearing before the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee on Thursday, Secretary of Defense nominee General James Mattis said that the United States should seek strategic cooperation with Russia, yet determine the challenges Moscow poses to U.S. national security. Mattis explained, we must define these objectives and look for areas of potential cooperation with Russia. At the same time, when we identify other areas where we cannot cooperate, we must confront Russia's behavior and defend ourselves if Russia chooses to act contrary to our interests. The retired general then told the committee that the United States military should consider developing offensive space capabilities to counter threats from Russia and China. On Thursday, Donald Trump's nominee for Director of Central Intelligence Agency reassured the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence that if confirmed, he will, quote, continue to foreign intelligence with vigor no matter where the facts lead. During his opening remarks, Pompeo commented on assertive stance that Russia has recently taken. Pompeo said that Moscow has, quote, reasserted itself aggressively, invading and occupying Ukraine, threatening Europe and doing nothing to aid in the defeat of ISIS. Russia has reasserted itself aggressively, invading and occupying Ukraine, threatening Europe, and doing nothing to, to aid in the destruction and defeat of ISIS. Later on during his speech, he said, it's pretty clear about what took place here about Russia involvement in effort to hack information and to have an impact on American democracy. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has picked a Russian critic as the country's new top diplomat. President-elect Donald Trump's nominee for Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is being applauded for many of his statements about Israel made during his confirmation hearing before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The former ExxonMobil oil CEO stated in no uncertain terms that, quote, Israel is, was, and has always been America's most important ally in the Middle East, end quote. He also used his first opportunity to express his views on the conflict to denounce Palestinian terrorism as an obstacle to a peace deal. Tillerson went on to say that the two-state solution should remain as an aspiration, even though it may not come to fruition in the near future. He also said he disapproves of last month's UN Security Council Resolution 2334 condemning Israeli building policies, and that he believes it hurt the prospects for peace. In related developments, over 100 congressional Republicans have signed a letter calling on Trump to make good on his campaign pledge to move the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv to Israel's eternal capital, Jerusalem. But reports of a watered-down version of Trump's vow are now circulating, that a proposed compromise may be in the making to offset Arab anger over the proposed relocation. Both U.S. and Israeli foreign ministry sources are now saying that newly appointed U.S. Ambassador David Friedman might be operating out of Jerusalem while the official embassy building remains in Tel Aviv. Mr. Nominee, what's the capital of Israel? The uh, capital of Israel that I go to, sir, is Tel Aviv because that's where all their government people are. But I've... Do you agree with me that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem? Sir, I, right now I, I stick with the U.S. policy. Okay. Do you, do you support moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? Uh, I would defer to the nominee for Secretary of State on that, sir. Okay. Do you support maintaining qualitative edge uh, for Israel against all potential adversaries in terms of their military capability? I do, sir. Okay. Do you support a two-state solution? Uh, I do. If that brings peace to the Middle East, I'm eager to see it work. If there's another solution, I'd be happy to hear what it is. Absolutely. The Israel Defense Force has admitted that Palestinian terror group Hamas used stolen photos of young women to lure dozens of Israeli soldiers into online chats that compromise their personal security. According to NBC News, the IDF said no major military secrets were disclosed, but that Hamas used the strings to gather information about Israeli army maneuvers in the Gaza area. Militants used stolen pictures to create fake social media profiles to hit on IDF personnel. 
persuading them to download a messaging app that turned the soldiers' smartphones into an espionage tool. According to the IDF, Hebrew slang and Israeli names were used to make the profiles and seemed more genuine. The IDF has produced a training video warning its soldiers how to detect honey trap scams in the future. The U.S. Senate has taken the first key step toward repealing President Barack Obama's signature health care law. During an overnight session that stretched into early Thursday morning, senators voted 51 to 48 to approve a budget measure that Republicans have dubbed the Obamacare Repeal Resolution. The resolution gives both House and Senate committees the green light to start working on legislation to repeal major portions of Obamacare. Republicans have said the process of repealing Obamacare could take months. Coming up with a replacement could take even more time. But President-elect Donald Trump has promised multiple times that he'll quickly repeal and replace the law. It'll be repeal and replace. It will be essentially simultaneously. The budget measure will go to the House next, where a vote is expected on Friday. Billionaire George Soros' fund manages about $30 billion for Soros and his family, but the progressive-leaning Soros took nearly a billion dollars in losses recently thanks to the stock market rally spurred by Donald Trump's surprise presidential election. Soros returned to trading at his fund last year, lured back by the opportunities to profit from what he saw as coming economic troubles. The Wall Street Journal's Gregory Zuckerman and Julia Chung report that Soros was cautious about the market going into November and became more bearish immediately after Trump's election. The stance proved to be a mistake, as the stock market has rallied on expectation that Trump's policies will boost corporate earnings and the overall economy. Over the past three months, the S&P 500 index has increased by more than 6%. As a result, some of Soros' trading positions incurred losses approaching $1 billion, people familiar with the fund say, adding that he adjusted his positions and exited many of his bearish bets late last year, avoiding further losses. On Wednesday, California lawmakers introduced bills that would attempt to stop the widespread proliferation of fake news by concentrating on public critical thinking. The bills would require the California Department of Education to teach students how to evaluate online news sources. Democrat Jimmy Gomez criticized the rise of fake news, calling it a direct threat to our democracy. And the bill, titled AB 115, urges that students be encouraged to develop, quote unquote, the ability to judge the credibility and quality of information found on internet websites, including social media. A painting by a high school student has set off a battle in Congress. It depicts an image of a pig in a police uniform aiming a gun at a protester. It is hanging in the Capitol along with hundreds of other works of art that were chosen in last year's Congressional Arts Competition. But Congressman Dan Reichert of Washington is asking the architect of the Capitol to decide whether or not it should be displayed. He says the painting is in clear violation of the competition's rules and is offensive to law enforcement. Democrats argue the painting represents free speech. A central Illinois man who was arrested after burning an American flag has filed a federal lawsuit seeking to have the state's flag desecration law declared unconstitutional. Police in Urbana used the state's flag desecration law to arrest Brighton Mellett on July 4, 2016. He said he planned his demonstration to protest racial discrimination, poverty, and other injustices. He then posted photographs of his actions on Facebook. The post led police officers to arrest Mellett and detain him for many hours. He was released without being charged. Mellet is being represented by the American Civil Liberties Union of Illinois. Muslims are turning to Christ in large numbers across the Middle East, according to the Christian Post. The report says Muslims are turning to Jesus Christ and are viewing Christianity as, quote, the religion of freedom and amid persecution in their country. The voice of the martyrs of Canada said, quote, there are thousands upon thousands coming to Christ. There are now an estimated 366,000 Christian 
believers in Iran, which is up from only 500 in 1979. And church leaders believe that millions can be added to the church in the coming years. Religion on the road. As we first told you last night, one Tennessee lawmaker wants to add a small reminder of God to every vehicle in the state. The separation of church and state is messy. Everyone has their own God. Sometimes. Religion and politics intersect in an unexpected place. I need a Tennessee license plate. The DMV is Jane Kupperman's last stop. I have a Florida tag. I need to be Tennessee legal. She becomes an official resident. And the new title will come to me in the mail. And driver in Tennessee. You know, I mean, we're the buckle of the Bible belt. Where faith is fiercely defended. God's stuff that needs to be distributed more through the state of Tennessee. Thank you so much. That's why some say they support a state representative's proposal to add four words to every license plate in the state. The United States government was built upon and God we trust. The license plate change is likely one of the simplest bills we'll see on Capitol Hill this session. The lawmaker behind it says it's a move in the right direction. We need more people like that out there. While some say the proposal is a reminder of what this state stands for. It's nothing wrong with I think it's a great idea. Others say it's vague enough to pass. I think it's just overall in a belief of God. But for others, this is an intersection of politics and a higher power. I just think they should keep church and state separate. That has no place here. The Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says the country's economy is under a terror attack. Erdogan said there is no difference between a terrorist with a gun and bomb in his hand and a terrorist with dollars, euros and interest rates. The president urged citizens to continue setting dollars and euros to counter the threat. Turkey's economy has been affected negatively over the past year by terror attacks and political instability following the July coup. The Turkish lira has hit an all-time low against the dollar this week. Analysts say both the short and long-term future of the Turkish currency will remain dependent on the political and security situation in the country. الاعشاب دوت رخيصه وبعدين بتساعد مع الناس والدوات الجو غلى قوي مع الناس ما بتقدرش تجيب العلاج فبتجيب الاعشاب دوت موفره وبتجيب مع الواحد على طول मेरा नाम जगवती है 25 साल हो गए मेरे को राशन लेते हुए इसमें खाली चावल और गेहूं मिलता है 61-year-old Jagwiti Kandelwal is one of the hundreds of poor residents in New Delhi's Mehram Nagar who buy food subsidized by India's government. Every month, Ms. Kandelwal and others queue up to get their fingerprints checked by a machine, which authorizes the sale of wheat and rice for each household. The new machine is a part of the government's rollout of its digital identification program, Aadhaar. It took India's government seven years to enroll almost 90% of the country's 1.2 billion people. That's because it had to collect the world's largest biometric data set, including prints of 11 billion fingers and photos of more than 2 billion eyes. Amazon announcing it will add 100,000 full-time jobs in the next 18 months. Eh? We're announcing full-time, oh. full benefit jobs across the U.S. Um, says really? it's going to grow its workforce from 180,000 to 280,000 by mid-2018. But also in this announcement it is pledging, Amazon pledging to hire and train an additional 25,000 veterans and military spouses over the next five years. I wonder if there's any bending to Donald Trump. Trump and grow the economy, grow I, the jobs here. I now, would, no, it's not going to do them check. any harm. Did you say 100,000 benefit jobs with benefits? Yes, full-time, full, full benefit time. jobs. None of this part-time stuff that so many people are being forced to take these days. That's uh, remarkable.
a man was leaned over, kind of holding on to the trunk. I kind of saw as he was hunched over that there was nobody in the driver. So I'm like, that has to be the driver. Either he's out of gas from afar. I'm like, oh, maybe we need some gas. But then as I pulled closer, you can see that he was, you know, hunched over for a reason. So came out, asked him what was what was wrong. And he's like, you know, I, I can't, you know. And he's like, you know, pat my back. And so I started, I started patting his back. I knew how to lift the guy. Um, I couldn't get low enough to get it in the right position, but I'm like, that's better than nothing. I said, uh, hey, God bless you. And he just kind of, in the video, so I just kind of took off. We're a Christian family, so we, we tend to do things for others, or, I mean, we're supposed to. That's what, you know, doing to others, you know, the golden rule. I was there for several minutes and you know several cars passed and no one you know stopped that's a rare thing in, in this society at least nowadays you know i think it's the exceptional person who will s step out of the box and do whatever has to be done and i, I would like to thank him again for for trying to help me